up, everybody? It is your girl, Glenda, and we are back with another episode of What You're Cooking, Glenda. You all know the house rules. If you would like to be part of the G-Squad, all you have to do is click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're updated every time we upload a new video. Also, we have gained so many subscribers you guys over the past couple of months and we want to say welcome welcome to the g-squad we hope that you enjoy the content here and um if any suggestions that you have please comment them in the comment section i like to respond to you all so now on to this video we are making an oven baked chuck roast Okay, let me start here. Here I have some um, fresh vegetables that are cut up. We got some red and green bell peppers. I literally had three fresh carrots. If you have baby carrots like out the bag or something like that, that's fine. I had three so we chopped those up and I have some red onion in here. You can use as little or as much vegetables as you like. For the roast, we're going to be seasoning that with a little bit of the quad, season all, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper. We're also gonna add some paprika to that. Um, and let's get started over here on our pan. Is While it's getting hot, it's on a medium heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. You guys know I don't measure for my newcomers. I don't measure y'all, so y'all just bear with us. About that much <laughs> of olive oil to the pan. Make sure it gets nice and hot. I also have some garlic over here that we're going to be adding to our um, vegetable mixture. What we're going to do is saute these real quick and then put them right back in this bowl. We're also going to be making some kale. I have some leftover kale from Thanksgiving that we are going to be cooking as well. We got about a bag and a half, something like that, of that triple washed kale. Now we're just going to add some bacon and onions to it. Normally I do smoked turkey with it, but we're not going to do all that. And this meal that we're making, today is Saturday, we're making this meal for our Sunday dinner, okay? So let's go in with our vegetables. And we're just going to give these like a quick saute. We're not going to like um, cook these down until they're translucent or anything like that. Now if you prefer to do that, that's your preference. Go right ahead and do your thing. But we're not going to do that today. I know I like to season every layer. So we're going to add some black pepper to this. And I'm going to add some onion powder and garlic powder. That was onion powder. It came out pretty thick. Some garlic powder and some chicken bouillon. I'm going to give that a mix. And then we're going to add our garlic to it. And we'll let it go for just a few minutes before adding it back to our bowl. So every now and again, y'all, we ask different questions and, and ask you guys to reply in the comment section. My question to you all is, what are your goals for 2024? Because y'all know it's coming up. And if the Lord says the same, we will all see it come around. So I want to know what your goals are for 2024. And another question is, what, what kind of dishes would you like to see prepared on what you're cooking Glenda, either between myself or my mother, who is Chef Lawanda. Y'all know we have combined, merged our channels. So either, even if you want Curtis to fix something, you know, if you want to see my husband, maybe out on the pit a little more, let us know in the comment section what you would like to see. And we will try our best to make it happen. I'm gonna turn the fire up to high heat. And then I have in this, I'm gonna show y'all this real quick, but I have a foil pan, a pretty big foil pan that's full of uh, onions. This is gonna be our bed that our roast is going to lay on so that it's not like directly on the pan. But let me, um, let me get this back into our bowl. All of them drippings and stuff, leave them there. It's good flavor. We're gonna put this to the side, and when we come back, I'm going to be seasoning up our roast, okay? Be right back. All right, so I've already started seasoning this with some season oil, and I got some black pepper right here. I told you guys that's the quad. And that's the onion powder, and that's the garlic powder to this. And y'all, just for video purposes, I'm doing it kind of like this, but 
What you really want to do, get the meat seasoned first before you start sauteing your vegetables because you want to let your meat kind of rest a little bit with these seasonings on it. Um, if you can do this overnight and season it and put it in the fridge and take it out about 45 minutes before it's time to cook it, then that's better results. Just a little tip. Hey y'all, this is me, Curtis, in the editing room. I just wanted to pop in and tell you about our Whatcha Catering Glenda website. Yes, I said it, Whatcha Catering Glenda. If you go to our, to the homepage of Whatcha Cooking Glenda on YouTube, you'll find a link there. And even in the description box of this video, you'll find a link there, sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash Whatcha Catering Glenda. And just so you know, these are all home cooked dishes, all right? Homemade dishes. Now, a couple of quick rules about this is that first of all, we are not serving. You'll have to provide the service. We provide the food. Second is that we are uh, requiring that it is two weeks prior to your event. All right, get back to the video. All right, so we have seasoned our roast. And what we're gonna do is add just a little bit of olive oil back to this pan. All right, I'm gonna go in with the big one first. And you wanna press that down so that your roast is flush with your pan and that uh, all areas of the bottom side of your rust, your rust, your rust, your roast. Y'all have not made a video in so long. I don't know how to act, Jesus. The bottom side of your roast hits all areas of the pan because you're looking for that nice sear, that nice crust. I kind of want to add this other roast in there. It won't fit. It won't fit? You don't think? You like that commercial? It won't fit. Just because you told me it won't fit. All right, I'm gonna remove my gloves and put on a new pair of gloves, y'all. You know, this is a word for somebody. You can't make something fit that don't fit in your life. This <laughs> not big on a lot of packets, y'all. But this is um, this right here is supposed to be full foolproof. So we've got some Aju gravy mix. I always make my own gravy, but I'm gonna try this. We've got some beef stew mix. I don't know if I'm going to use this, to be honest with you. Because um, I don't want it to be too salty. So, I'm not sure about this one. And then, the kicker is supposed to be this Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. So, for sure, I know I'm going to be mixing these two when we get ready to go in the pan and go in the oven and all that good stuff. For sure, I know I'm going to be mixing these two. The jury is still out on this one, all right? So we're going to put that to the side. I'm going to clean up right here a little bit while we let this get a nice caramelization on the other side before flipping it. And we'll be right back. Hang in there with this guy. Hang. All right, let's flip this first one over. I'm probably going to need the... Come closer so they can see that right there. That's what you're looking for, y'all. A nice sear. See, mom, because it don't fit. It fits. It's enough. These sides get nice and hot. And it'll be just fine. All right, so that's the kind of crusting you want to see on this side. You want to see it also on the other side. Of course, what this does is just lock in all those flavors and juices um, for you. And it also kind of cooks it some so that it's not spending a whole like eight hours in the oven. Now, we're, I was going to cook this low and slow, like on 250. But again, for the sake of the video, we're going to put it up to about 350. And this is really gonna cook for probably three hours, y'all. On 350, for probably two and a half to three hours. 
And then on that third hour, you'll go in and add your potatoes. Okay, I have four potatoes that my sous chef so graciously peeled for me already. I'm just gonna put chunk it up, and once it goes in the oven, I'll start on the kale greens. So we're, I'm not gonna bore you guys. We're just gonna let this um, cook some more on this other side, get nice and crisp, not crispy, but crusty. And um, we'll be back when we transfer it to the pan. And so you guys, I want you to know that your your stove should have been like on a medium high so, so that you can get um, a good crusting on there. And let me go ahead and remove these. Ooh, that looks so good. Look at y'all know. Woo! Turn it over just like so. And we're going to put it right on the bed of our onions. Look at that. Y'all see that? Right on the bed. Now, the next thing, y'all, y'all see all of this goodness in this pan? We're not gonna let that go to waste either. We're gonna take this and put this to the side so it can rest. You know, I'm just taking some Smart Balance butter. Use whatever butter you have. This will kind of help get up some of these bits. The fun. This at the bottom of your pan. Now, we're going to add our vegetables. Put this on medium heat. We're going to add our vegetables back to that pan. And all the goodness that it came with. And so I'm going to add in some uh, beef bouillon. We're going to make a beef bouillon uh, flavoring. And I've got a couple of cups of hot water over here. And we're gonna make ourselves a little gravy. Let me add in a little bit of APF, all purpose flour. A little bit of that. Gotta mix until you don't see the flour. You notice it's kind of thickening up the butter that you had. Our hot water. You just give it a mix as you are adding. Medium high heat so this can come to a simmer. I don't want this majorly thick right now. If you want it thick right now, then you you add a little bit more flour and more water and stuff like that to yours if you want it to be like thick gravy thick. But we we're not we're doing a thin gravy right now. And I'm I think I'm gonna go ahead and add in our Aju gravy mix. Now at this point, now uh, some of you, I don't know if y'all heard of Mississippi Pot Roast, comment below if you've heard of Mississippi Pot Roast, um, where you use the pepperoncini peppers. I thought about actually doing that because I have some and turn this into a Mississippi Pot Roast. And once again, you guys, this meal is for tomorrow, for Sunday dinner. Oh, that's delicious. I don't need to add anything but to I'm gonna add some black pepper to it because it'll help kick up the flavors that are already there. So we're gonna let this come to a boil uh, or a simmer, a high simmer, <laughs> and then we're gonna pour it right over the um, roast that we have resting back here. And I'm gonna add in this ranch powder or right over the top of the roast and we're gonna cover it and put it in the oven for a few hours. So y'all just saw me add a little bit of chicken bouillon flavoring just to kind of offset the beef a little bit. Sometimes the beef can be too beefy. Our roast. Hopefully you'll be able to catch all this. So, I'm gonna drop these down along the sides of our vegetables. All right, so I am gonna add a little bit more water to this because I want to, I don't wanna submerge 
but I want to cover just a little bit more. All right. Now, I have never added a ranch packet. <laughs> so I really hope it's not like over salty. So, and I think I'm not even gonna add all of it. I'm just gonna do a little bit right over the top. All right, so we're gonna get some foil and we're gonna cover this up. This is where you would also add your pepperoncini peppers if you're doing the Mississippi pot roast. You would add those right over the top and all throughout your um, gravy mixture here and cover it and put it in the oven, all right? So we're gonna put this in the oven, 350 for a few hours, probably two, and then when it's ready to start that third hour, we're gonna drop in our potatoes, which I need to still just cube up. And you can put as many or as little as you like. And if you don't want any potatoes, because you make your mashed potatoes, that's fine too. Don't do it, just let it go ahead and go. Because you want it to be fork tender to where you can just pull it apart with, with your fork, all right? We'll see you back here in just a little bit as I'm going to saute some kale. All right, so part of this meal is our kale. And we're gonna saute some kale. Um, I'm starting off in the same pan, y'all, so don't be coming for me in the comment section talking about she used a dirty pan. I want all the flavors. So we're using the same pan with some bacon in it. <clears throat> Once this bacon starts cooking, it's going to pick up a lot of these flavors from the vegetables, from our pot roast, uh, <clears throat> the dripping from the pot roast. But we're gonna cook down our bacon some. And then we're gonna add in our onions. And then we're gonna saute up some kale. A little bit at a time, because our pan is not gonna hold it all at once. If you don't like onions and you are okay with onion powder, just use onion powder, y'all. this down about I don't know five to seven minutes I guess and that's gonna be before you add some garlic all right so I'm gonna go in now with a teaspoon probably a heaping teaspoon of garlic that's it because we're gonna be using the chef chamois garlic butter with parmesan cheese and basil Gonna be using that, and it is very, very flavorful. So that our garlic does not burn, you just want to cook it until it's fragrant. When you start smelling that garlic, smell it now. We're gonna start adding in kale. I'm just gonna do about this much for now. So just. Let it cook down a little bit and then we'll add some more. I'm gonna turn my heat down to like a medium. Add in some garlic butter. Y'all be careful because when y'all buy those greens and different the different greens in the bag at the store and you wash them and all that good stuff they be having extra stems to help weigh down the bag you guys are catching my drift here as to what I'm doing if you've never seen sauteed greens before you can welcome to check out um, Chef Luanda's studio y'all see how that cooks down to nothing that's why we got to keep it moving 
add in some more garlic, but don't worry, we're gonna season it up with a little bit of chicken bouillon and probably a tiny bit of sugar, to be honest with you, like a teaspoon. That kale got that good bacon flavor in it because you sauteed your bacon up and had it rendering the fat. You're adding some more fat from your garlic butter. Y'all, this kale is about to be ridiculous. If you try any of these recipes, y'all, please tag us on Instagram, what you're cooking, Glenda underscore one. The number one, underscore the number one. Make sure you tag us. And if you guys did something different, let me know. Because sometimes I like to try out different ways to do, to cook meals, you know. Some things that I didn't think about. And make sure you send a picture of what you, what you, uh, the way you cooked yours. Those are things I love to look at and love to know that you guys are actually watching and trying out these dishes. So at this point, I do have a little bit more garlic butter left in this jar over here. So I'm gonna add the rest of it. Just make me a little well. This right here is good for like, um, when you wanna make you some garlic toast, like for your, for your pasta and stuff. All you need is this. Oh, and a little bit of cheese. It's the bomb. You don't have to do anything extra. Now remember y'all, we have not seasoned this yet. We just wanna get it cooked down get the bacon and the onions well incorporated. Our pot roast is in the oven. I'm gonna add in some chicken bouillon, a couple of teaspoons, season to taste. I think I'm gonna add in a teeny bit of garlic powder. That probably was about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. And some black pepper. And that's what, my, what I'm seasoning with y'all. We're gonna put a top on this <coughs> and let it continue to cook down, let those flavors become friends, everything that's been in this pan, and I'm gonna come back and I'll taste it in just a few moments for any type of uh, seasoning that it may need, and so we'll be right back. All right, y'all, so we are back. It's been about two hours and nine minutes, and this is what we're looking like, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Y'all look at that. Look at yonder. Look at yonder. So now I'm gonna go in with my potatoes, y'all. This was just four potatoes that we just cubed up and left in water so that they wouldn't oxidize. I'm gonna take this knife right here. Just to show y'all look how tender that is already. Oh, look at that. Now that comes straight through. Check this out, y'all. Put that away with my hands. So this last little hour is gonna be exactly what you need just for your potatoes and for the rest of the cook time. We're gonna cover this back up. And the next time you see us, you guys, this will be done and you'll see plates and everything. So we will say, oh, show them the saute kale and we're gonna put this together with some rice and we got cornbread over there Curtis will show you the cornbread there's our cornbread for tomorrow the kale the sauteed kale which is absolutely delicious and I did not add any extra any sugar to it um you see the roast we're gonna get another piece of foil from this part that tour and um, we're going to add some rice to this and listen that's what it is this is the meal for sunday dinner we are going to see you guys on the next episode of what you cook blend up make sure that you like share and subscribe make sure that you comment and stay tuned for the pictures we'll holler at y'all